So today um, begins what I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, as a math teacher of pre-calculus, is the, with a capital T-H and E, most important thing from pre-calculus. It's the unit circle. It's so important that if you don't pass this unit circle test, the non-calculator portion that I showed you yesterday, I'm not going to put a grade in for you. I'm going to give you an incomplete or no credit until you're done. So you will get 100% on this unit circle test. You can have unlimited tries, but you're not going to get a credit until you pass it at 100%. That's how important it is. And we're going to come back to this in the unit circle. Um, I'm going to do a few other things first. So I'm going to work my way backwards in this lesson. So we're going to start on the third slide. I think this is the third slide. Is that correct? Yeah. And we're going to talk about even and odd with trig functions. So in the past, <coughs> we've talked about the word even and the word odd. And in each of these cases, we plug in the opposite of x and we see what happens. So one of the things that you find out is that the even functions are the ones that turn out to be um, the same as what you started out with when you plug in the opposite. So in this case, what that means is that the cosine function and the secant function are called even because when you plug in the opposite of t or whatever thing that you're plugging in, x, theta, z, q, whatever, you get back the original function cosine and the same for secant. The other functions that we're going to talk about that are trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosecant, the tangent, and the cotangent, those are odd, meaning that when you plug in the opposite thing inside of the parentheses, the whole function becomes opposite. So for example, in the yellow up above, what that means is if I took the cosine of negative 30 degrees, that's the same as the cosine of positive 30 degrees. Down below what this is saying is that if I took the, for example, the sine of negative 30 degrees, that's equal to the opposite of the sine of 30 degrees. So in even functions, when you plug in a negative, it's the same as the function when you don't plug in a negative. And in odd functions, when you plug in a negative, it's the same as the opposite if you plugged in a positive. Okay, and that's what they're saying, just so you know. Down below, they give us some examples and they say, hey, look, the sine of the opposite of t is negative 3 eighths. What is, first of all, the sine of t? Well, you have to understand that the sine of t is an odd function. So the number that you see here was actually the opposite. So if I want the sine of not the opposite, I take the, the opposite. opposite of what I saw. So the answer is negative 3 eighths. Notice back up in the light blue, the negative on the inside went to negative on the outside. Down here, if I start out with a negative on the inside, it goes to a negative on the outside. So whichever way helps you to think about it, that's another way to say it. Negative 30 on the inside, negative whatever was produced. <coughs> negative 30 on the inside, or negative t in this case, produced a positive 3 eighths. So now that number actually became the opposite sign of whatever it started out as. In part B, cosecants are also odd. So the difference between a cosecant and a sine, and if you don't remember these things, cosecants are the reciprocal function or one over. So you just you flip it upside down. So this answer is negative 8 thirds. Now this will probably make a lot more sense as we go back and look at a triangle and sine, cosine, tangent, Sokotoa. I'll refresh your memory. But just so you know, cosecants and sines are reciprocals. Or in other words, the cosecant is 1 divided by the sine of t. So you flip it. And that's what they wanted you to know. <laughs> Again, don't worry about this so much right now. I just want to show you the examples um, so you can have them as reference later. But we're going to do a lot more with like triangles and unit circle stuff. Domain. Remember, domain means x values. x values. 
And for sine and cosine, if you ever looked at the graphs of those, those were the um, periodic graphs that we did that, in case you don't remember, look something like this. Um, this is the sine graph, and this is the cosine graph. And so the domain, they go on forever, so we know that the domain is negative infinity to infinity. But the range for sine and cosine is different. You'll notice that there are mountain tops that go up so high, valleys that go down so low. There's only a maximum and a minimum. And the range, the y values, for these functions, unless they're altered, like just sine and cosine, go from negative 1 to 1. So the standard range is negative 1 to 1. If I multiply everything by 3, of course, it could go up to 3 and down to th negative 3. But in general, that's if it hasn't been altered, that's what's going on. So now as we're working our way backwards, this is the previous slide or page, I believe, on your packet. And if you remember a long time ago, we, um, we would talk about a triangle. And if you had a triangle that maybe looked like this, and there was a right angle in here somewhere, and maybe this is A, B, and C. And we talked about an angle. We would talk about sines, cosines, and tangents. Now, with the stuff that you see here, I'm going to erase this triangle. So hopefully you didn't write it down. If you did, no big deal. And I'm going to draw a new one. And what I want to show you is that in this new triangle, if I draw it in the first quadrant, just so it's easy to see, and it's a right triangle, I know that the horizontal distance is called the x distance because it's along the x axis. So I'm going to call this horizontal distance over here x. And I'm going to tell you that the vertical distance then is called y. And I'm just going to, for the sake of argument, going to make this hypotenuse a 1. I'm just going to choose a value. And you're going to see why I chose the value 1 in a little while. It's going to be pertaining to this thing called the unit circle, which means we have a radius of 1 unit. 1. So that's why I picked 1. And if I tell you that the angle right here is going to be called T. When I look in the table that you see off to the left here, all of these things kind of make sense. Don't forget from a long time ago, the sine of an angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And the box that you see on this slide, where it says the sine of t equals, and the cosine of t equals, and all that stuff, is referring to the red triangle off to the right. So as I look at the box, and I say, hey, what's the sine of t? Here's t. The sine is the opposite, y, divided by the hypotenuse, 1, which is y. The cosine is the adjacent, x, divided by the hypotenuse, 1. The tangent is the opposite, y, divided by the adjacent, x, so y over x. So all of these things that you see in the table are referring to that red triangle. Now these cosecant, secant, and cotangent are called the cofunctions. They are the reciprocals, or the flips, of the sine, cosine, and tangent. So whatever you saw for this answer, the sine answer, flip it upside down, that's the cosecant. Whatever you saw for the cosine answer, flip it upside down, that's the secant answer. Whatever you saw for the tangent answer, flip it upside down, and that's the cotangent answer. Okay, so now in this slide, 
We're going to talk about the unit circle. And I'm going to do a couple things with the unit circle on this one. But then I'm going to kind of digress and go to something different. Because I want to show you something really interesting about the unit circle. So first of all, they call it the unit circle because it's a circle that has its center at the origin and has a radius of 1. So I want to show you a couple of things about this circle with a radius of 1. If I know that my radius is 1, and I tell you then I want to talk about a 30 degree angle. You might not recall this, but we used to have, um, a long time ago, a rule about special right triangles that we'll talk about tomorrow. But I'm going to give you a preview today. So in this triangle, if I look at something like a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you might not recall this, but one side was x, that was the short side. The hypotenuse was 2x, and the medium side, or the other leg, was x times the square root of 3. So as we look at this light blue triangle on the right-hand side up here, the general idea about this special right triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle, how would I go from the hypotenuse to the side that's across from the 30-degree angle? Very good, Tristan. Divide by 2. So as I look at my triangle I actually drew in the big circle, if my hypotenuse is 1, then the vertical side has to be 0.5, or in other words, 1 half. Now I'm going to use the number 1 half because fractions in this unit are going to be very important. Now, if I wanted to then go from the short side, or the side that's across from the 30 degree angle, to the side that's the medium side, or in other words, across from the 60 degree angle, how do I go from the x side to the x root 3 side? Multiply by root 3. So this thing right here on the bottom, this horizontal side, is called 1 half times the square root of 3. Or, as we like to say in pre-calculus, we call it root 3 over 2. <coughs> uh. You with me so far? Okay. So if I said, what's the sign of that 30 degree angle? You would say it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, or in other words, one half. If I said, what's the cosine of that angle? You would say it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2 over 1, which is root 3 over 2. OK? I just want to show you that. Let's say that I was talking about a different kind of triangle. And I'm just going to draw it somewhere in this unit circle. So I'm going to draw it over here. Notice how it's inside the unit circle. So that means that the radius is still 1. And I want to remind you about another special right triangle. Called the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And that's where two sides, it's also known as an isosceles right triangle, that's where two sides were the same, and then to get to the hypotenuse, you'd multiply by the root of 2. If I'm looking at this pink triangle, and I want to go from the hypotenuse, which has an x and a square root of 2 next to each other, to one of the legs, how would I do that? Excellent, Tristan. I would divide by the square root of 2. So to go from this one in the pink triangle in my circle to the side, I would write down one divided by the square root of two. Now we know in pre-calc we're not allowed to leave things in unsimplified form. And what I'm going to tell you is when you simplify that, that's called the square root of two over two. And I'm not going to go through how to simplify that. We've done that a lot in this class already in the past.